In recent years, astonishing technological developments have pushed humanity toward far-reaching morphological transformations that promise to redefine what it means to be human. Among these is a growing intellectual and cultural movement known as transhumanism. The transhumanists plan to use genetics, robotics, artificial intelligence, and nanotechnology as their tools for reshaping and radically redesigning our minds, our memories, our physiology, and even our offspring. When I first heard the word transhumanism, like a lot of people, I was a little overwhelmed. Was this science even possible? Or was it just science fiction? It was immediately clear that if this technology were, in fact, real, these developments might lend themselves as an aid to humanity in the ceaseless battle for health and long life. But on the other hand, something in my gut sensed that there could be another side to all of this. When something appears too good to be true, it often is. So questions formed in my mind. What were the moral implications of becoming something other than Homo sapiens sapien, humans? What we are today. Would we be human at all if the agenda of these scientists were met? Well, I decided to investigate the issue, and I started reaching out to experts on all sides of the movement, and I was surprised by what some of them had to say. Transhumanism is basically a worldview developed by those who want to consider living longer and applying the skilled sciences and emerging technologies and bringing this about through principled values and ethics. Transhumanism as a philosophical point of view is a codified philosophy that pretty much does the same thing. As a philosophy, it is seeking knowledge and truth about ways we can look at improving the human condition, extending life, improving our environmental situations, our transportation communication, ways we can work as a species to better enrich and protect and sustain our species. As a worldview, it's based on the enthusiasm and proactivity of people throughout the world who want to put good use to the sciences and technologies that are emerging. Therefore, it has become a worldview. One of the challenges for transhumanists is to uh, push forward an idea that comes out of the Enlightenment, which is that um, what gives us moral standing or what's significant about being a human being and alive is that we're a self-conscious, subjective being. Humanity has the right and obligation to take rational control of its own destiny and to improve its welfare through reason and science. And uh, the challenge is that as we begin to do that in ways that move beyond the constraints of being human, uh, become live longer than humans traditionally have, uh, have more cognitive abilities, have more physical abilities than tradition, humans traditionally have, that it's no longer humanism, it's something beyond humanism. And so that meaning is that it, we're transcending humanism, or humanism that transcends itself. Humanism. Everybody talks about humanism. That is the worship of the human being. And from the secular perspective, I think transhumanism uh, could be construed as an extension of what is now the humanist model. We know what the human being is, we've analyzed the human being, we've psychoanalyzed the human being, we have looked into the genetics of the human being, and now people are saying it's time to perfect the human being. And that's a secular enterprise, so transhumanism from the secular perspective is, I think, going on beyond humanism uh, to create a, a more perfect human being. Man cannot improve upon what God has done in the past. Transhumanism is a utopian and a neo-eugenic social movement uh, that presumes that it will be able to create a post-human species uh, for the betterment of humankind. I think there are four primary elements to the movement. 
Number one might be called radical self-design. That is uh, turning uh, myself, if I want to, into a purple and plaid entity with wings. Uh, the second would be immortality, the, the idea that uh, somehow we could uh, recreate our biology so that we can live hundreds of years, if not uh, become immortal. The third is a procreative redesign, that is, presuming the right to create our progeny to suit our needs in the future, what we think would be a better human being, uh, either for them perhaps, but also mainly for us. For example, the person who's a frustrated musician trying to redesign his uh, embryo so that uh, when the child grows up, uh, they can be Beethoven. And I think the fourth is kind of a, a neo-deity project, the idea that we can become gods and we can endow life with certain attributes that we think are better. Uh, there's a certain hubris to the entire movement. There's certainly utopianism, which is always dangerous. And there's eugenics, because it denies the idea of human exceptionalism and the unique importance of human life.